Hello, Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to see everybody here. Uh, if anybody has a story they'd like to tell, share, please just go over to the side here. And after Daniel has a little, um, and Jerry, they're going to say a few words. And we're, you'll have space to share your story because it's, it's important. We all have a voice in this situation. So here we go. Here's Daniel. Thanks very much. Great to see everybody. Really good crowd today. Beautiful day. Take a deep breath. And just tune in your body, man. You're alive. You're human. We are here on this earth, walking this earth on two legs. And it's a great gift. And no matter what's going on out there, what goes on in here is beautiful. So one more time, take a deep breath in. And just focus on your own physical body. Close your eyes for a second. And just feel yourself in your body. One more deep breath and let all the stress go. And then ask yourself this one question. Who am I? Who am I? So we're going to get back to that in a few minutes. Thank you for coming. Coincidentally, and I do have a little talk prepared, semi-prepared, but uh, it, it, completely coincidentally, the gentleman that Vince was talking about that got escorted out of University of Pennsylvania yesterday called me on the phone and told me what happened. I had never met this man before. He's a friend. He's, he's a, a fiance of a good friend of mine. And, and so he told me the whole story. And basically, Penn was saying, by not taking the vaccine, you're voluntarily resigning. And he's like, hey, you could fire me if you want to, but just say that. Don't lie. It's not voluntary. The, the cops are walking me out of here, you know? And I, I had suggested to him by text prior to that um, that he just record the whole thing. So he recorded the whole thing. So that's kind of cool. Now, the other part of that story, which is tragic and very appropriate here, is that the fiancé, the reason I was in touch with her was because I had heard the story that she's friends with a nanny of a family who volunteered their six-year-old son to participate in these vaccine trials. And this little boy had a big fever the night of the vaccine. They took him into the emergency room. Who knows what they gave him, but they sent him home with a fever. And he was dead in the morning. He died. And he's fairly local. I, I'm, I, I'm trying to get uh, the, the family or the nanny to come and talk. I mean, I think, you know, Tucker Carlson would be happy to have her on at this point. But this is what happens, right? J James Lyons Weiler is one of the top anti vax scientists in the country, if not the top. He spoke here, I guess, earlier this summer, right? I mentioned that story to him, and he's like, hey, I reviewed all that, all that data. There's no dead kids in there. So they're able, the pharmaceutical company is, is masterful at twisting the science around. They exclude this kid from the study somehow, and it's got whitewashed. And I didn't get the exact details, but the woman told me that that child death was whitewashed in 24 hours. It was just buried. So we're going we're gonna to hopefully support the people in um, bringing the truth to, to bear here. So, and that's what this talk is actually about. My talk is about truth. And you know, I'm Irish, my last name's Murphy, and we, from the, in the Irish tradition, it's an oral tradition. A lot of Native Americans' traditions are oral traditions too. And so there's a whole different set of rules and values in, in oral traditions. And one of those values is, and the high, one of the highest values is truth. If you live in a society that's based in an oral tradition and you lie, you will be ostracized. Even one lie, if you lie about your parents or your, 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 your genealogy, Right, you'd be ostracized. That that would be this unforgivable. And so, somehow, the further and further we get away from this oral tradition and from these societies that are bonded uh, through um, these deep connections, we get further and further away from the truth. And if you look at what's going on, um, I mean, just imagine if you had to walk into your own house at night and hear a story from your child or from your spouse or from your, your, your sister or brother or mother or father and have to ask yourself I wonder if these people are telling the truth or not 
every time they told you anything, it would it would drive you crazy. It would be insane. It would be so much wasted time and energy. And so that much more so in a democratic society, you know, when we have these incredibly powerful institutions that have uh, financial interest in promoting lies, that we are we have somehow accepted that it's okay to be lied to. It's okay for the politicians to lie. It's okay for the media to lie, weapons of mass destruction. It's okay for the scientists to lie. And who is the chief scientist liar? Can I hear his name, please? Fauci. So we're going to have him say, say with me one more time, folks. I'm going to say, fire Fauci. Fire Fauci. Fire Fauci. Fire Fauci. And, and that, so... If you get right down to it, there, there, there has been no accountability for all the transgressions. It's not just with the vaccines and 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 within the uh, pharmaceutical industry and their transgressions and Vioxx and all that. It's back to weapons of mass destruction. It's back to the war, even the Vietnam War, Gulf of Tonkin, completely fabricated incident. Nobody lost their job. There was no hearing strike. Weapons of mass destruction, that lie cost 600,000 lives in Iraq. It costs $2.4 trillion. That's more money than we can even imagine. That's like the student debt times two or close to it. It's just a ridiculous amount of money. And there was never even a congressional hearing to determine where the intelligence went wrong. And so on some level, we as a society have to now stand up and say, we're not going to accept these lies anymore. The, the price, the price of what we are going to pay the price for this, and and the number one thing we can do right now is go after Fauci, Bobby Kennedy, who is a champion of truth. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you for your good work. We love you here in Philly and in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. But Bobby Kennedy, God bless you, and God, God bless the work that you do here on this earth. Bobby Kennedy is a champion of truth. This man, they try to go after him for anything they can to try to find any mistake he makes. He does not lie. And he's got the truth on his side. And that's what we have on our side, too. So he's got a book coming out um, about Fauci, The Lies and Deception. I forget the exact title of it, but I believe Lies, are, Lies is right after Fauci there. And, of course, Fauci was just bound to lie. Rand Paul, another champion of truth. Let's hear it for Rand Paul. God bless you, Rand Paul. Now, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not. Now, I guess I shouldn't say it, but Rand Paul's president. Anyhow, um, Bobby Kennedy's book is coming out November 15th. If you haven't pre-ordered a copy, I recommend you do. Go get that book. And that is going to be the time because the news just came out, of course, that the NIH did do the gain-of-function research. We all knew it all the time anyhow. Anybody with a bit of common sense, you don't need a scientific, you don't need to be a scientist to say that, hey, this virus came, didn't just show up the first pandemic in 100 years. The worst one in 100 years shows up eight miles away from the stage level four virology lab in Wuhan where they were studying coronaviruses and bats. But anyhow, the book's coming out. Fauci got caught lying. This is the time where we can put, put the pressure on. And this is this is going to be the, the change here. We got to look for those little victories right now. And, and taking Fauci down, it may not sound like a big thing to you, but Jack, James Lyons, while I talked to him on the phone from time to time, He's assured me that within the scientific community, there is such a lockdown of dissenting voices because there's so much power and control and people don't want to lose their jobs and lose their funding and be labeled a quack and all that stuff. If Fauci goes down, it's going to open up the floodgates for a lot of the scientists to come forward and start telling the truth. Yeah. So... The real Anthony Fauci. The real Anthony Fauci. That's a scary thought. God. Yeah. So when that book comes out, get the book, read the book, and then start writing. Start writing. Everybody you can think of, the call for accountability, call for you know, you know, congressional hearings to follow the chain, where everything went, where everything went wrong, call for Fauci's resignation and try to put the push through. I mean, this guy is a sacred cow. He's probably he's I think he's the, the highest paid government employee, and he's like been in, in power for 40 years. And of course, if you study Judy Mikovich, and she'll tell you about the, the his um uh, misdeeds were related to the whole AIDS um, uh, research and epidemic. And I'm seeing a lot of non-heads out there. I love you guys, man. So uh, I think we got one more speaker. I'm just going to tell you one more thing before, before we go. I've already filled out Forrest Bears reports myself. All right. 
One of my guys was a contractor, good guy working for me, 61 years old. I begged him not to get that vaccine. His wife was a nurse. She talked him into it. He took that vaccine at the end of February. He was dead March 17th, right? And we kept looking. I'm like, yo, Rocco, you don't look too good, man. Like, he was all sweaty and pasty. I kept missing work and feeling bad. It was, I mean, there's no question in my mind. My son's um, great uncle on his mother's side, I was at dinner with him at the end of March, and he was saying, hey, and then and I'll admit, yeah, he, he had an advanced renal disease. He was an elder. He was ready to go. And he said so at dinner. I said, I'm ready to go. And guess what? I just got my second bash shot. I, I couldn't figure out how to put it. Anyhow, that was Friday, and he was dead the next Friday. That's two. My best friend from high school is a medical doctor. who was an early, early in on the Pfizer shot. This man, yes, overweight, probably had a little uh, history of, you know, something going on with the heart. But he hadn't missed but one day of work in 35 years. Got that back, that Pfizer shot. Two weeks later, he was in the emergency room. Had to have an emergency heart operation. He had uh, tachycardia, almost died. Heart rate went to 220, wouldn't come down. So that's that. that, that the only was saved. His life was only saved by an emergency operation. So that's three, right in the kind of close circle, right there that I got. And and so you just have to know within your own heart, like those kind of stories. That that it's not. This isn't one in a million, man. This is like. These numbers are being buried, you know. So again, let's go for the truth. I appreciate y'all coming out, and uh, we're gonna hear we're gonna hear from Jerry now. Yeah, thank you very much. God bless y'all. Isn't he great? Oh, oh. Daniel Murphy. Joe Volpe, thank you for speaking here. Hey, everybody. Um, great day today. We're looking for silver linings here. At least I am. I spent all summer kind of being depressed. Like, oh, how can I have a good time here because all this stuff's going on? And then I realized I got to turn that around. And I got to make my, like, I got to grab my joy. I got to make my joy. And how do you make that? You make joy with, in community. So just look around you. These are the people that are in your community now or came out to, for this afternoon. Say hello to someone you don't, you don't know. Go meet somebody new. And uh, when you get home, go look for... Uh, Go look for a group. They're, they're popping up everywhere and, and start meeting with people and, and, and joining forces. Ah, buy yourself a children's health defense uh, T-shirt. That's a... All right, yeah. Are, are you guys hungry? I don't know if anybody's hungry yet, but you can't eat a cafeteria. Anyhow, we got another speaker. If anybody else wants to speak, we'll, we want to hear your story. Um, Josh here was just recently lost his job from the bath fitters for standing up, and he's going to tell you that story right now. Give a hand for Josh. Thanks, Josh, for coming up. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. Um, this is uh, this is a pretty wild time. One, one real big thing that, that kind of hit me um, was uh, this research by Dr. Matthias Desmet. And his big thing was trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Like, why are so many people just eating this stuff up? Why are so many people blindly just, they, everybody's starting to look like a zombie? And it's called mass formation. And it's a, essentially a massive psychological hypnosis that people fall under that taps into our innate need to belong to a tribe. And so when people, you know, have to step outside of the comfort zone of like, oh, I can't disagree with the tribe because I might be ostracized and then I won't survive on my own. And I'm here to tell you that, that it's not true. I know you all know, but we'll, the, the beautiful thing that Dr. Desmet described is it only takes one to 3% of the population to sway the entire thing back into the other direction. And I'm proud to stand here with you all today and know that we are a part of that one to three percent that's going to sway it back because we are three people. Um, I was just, uh, I got the ax on Monday. Um, I went into a job. I was going to install a bathroom at the uh, military barracks in Carlisle. And I, I went to get onto the base at the visitor center. They told me I needed to wear a mask. And I said, oh, no, thank you. And uh she said, she said, well, sir, you, you have to have a mask. This is government property. I said, 
Oh, um, well, if that's the case, that's no problem at all. I'll just talk to my manager and they'll send somebody out tomorrow, but you won't get a bathroom today for me. And I uh, called my boss and uh, told him the situation. And he says, oh, well, corporate's not going to like this. And I said, Brian, with all due respect, I, I don't care. Um, like, <laughs> cor corporate can say whatever they want, um, but I'm not wearing a mask. And so um, the next day goes, we set up this big whole meeting. There was HR, the CFO was there, um, the territory managers, this and that. And the most beautifully ironic part about this was that we sat down in this conference room and not a single one of us had a mask on. <laughs> Throughout this entire conversation that I had with these people, um, you know, they asked me to you know, describe what happened, this and that. And he said, and this is what I think they're going to try to continue to do. It's just the, the next elevation is with vaccines is, so you're telling me that you're willingly not going to comply with company policy. And I said, well, if company policy is willingly going to violate my basic human rights, then we have a problem. Here we to which he then answered, asked the question again. He wanted to bait me into saying, no, I won't you know, do company policy. And I continued to let him know that it's a violation of our rights. And not at a single point in time throughout this conversation was a matter of health. It was a matter of our health, of our safety, of keeping people safe. That never came into the, com the, to the conversation. It was comply, comply, comply. And not ever at any point in time, if it is not right in here, I will not comply, period. So thank you so much. It only takes one to 3% of us, like just continue to say no, no matter what. If it does not feel good in here and you're doing it, it's gonna eat you alive. So continue to stay true to yourself, love yourself, love everybody. I mean, that's what this is about and uh, continue to stay strong. You're all wonderful, beautiful people. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so much for coming out. This is awesome. So my name is Stephanie, and this is my husband Kyle. We are both pilots for a major airline, whom you might have heard of in the news. We uh, were granted a religious exemption, and following that, directly put on an unpaid leave of absence. That is not a reasonable accommodation. That is a retaliation, and so. Us, along with 2,000 other United employees, joined together to form Airline Employees for Health Freedom, AE4HS. And we have been working with Sarah Jaffe from um, D.C., a lawyer, uh, law firm from D.C. And we are currently in litigation and fighting for our religious and medical rights under Title VII in the Civil Rights Act and American with Disabilities. So we we appreciate all prayers and positive feedback on social media. You can visit AE4HF.com. That would be an action item that we could do together as a community. Um, we have a long fight ahead because even if we win this current round, we're certain that United, I'm sorry, the airline is going to appeal. And um, so we would appreciate any donations. And as you can see, we have a handful of kids. So unpaid leave is quite unreasonable for two parents who work for the same company. God bless you all. God bless Bobby County. God bless Delta Victory. God bless the children. God bless the United States. God bless America. In the end, and finally, the way this thing's going to get resolved, the way it's going to get right here in the world, so when we get back to that question of who am I, and we all get out of this illusion, these outer selves with their limitations, we realize that we are divinely, um, we're divine beings here. We're, we're a little piece of God. And we can create this world the way we want to create it. We can create it with love. We can create it with joy. We can create it with care, sharing. And now... Uh, we can unseat this world, the the, uh, the selfishness, the greed, the tyranny uh, that uh, the world's going through right now. But it's gonna be it's gonna be done, on, you know, when uh, as a collective, we got to do it. And this is the really the, the silver lining here to, to go out there and make yourself live your 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 best life, be your best self, you know, tune into your higher self and live your life like that, and share that with and let that spread to the people around you. As we all do that, we're going to make this thing work here. God bless y'all. Thanks for coming out.
Take care. Now. Thank <laughs> you.